Our queen C, we are back with our book. Remember the 48 laws of black empowerment. Now, listen, my disclaimer is there is no way I can agree with every single word that is written in the book, and you won't either. But we can learn something from this. This is a powerful book, okay? Remember, I told you the categories were uh, let's see here personal, family, business and finance, community, and activism. So we're at now number one, which is personal, okay? Now we did the introduction last time, so please go back and get that video. So personal, he's making a point. So let's start, it reading. Let's start reading, and he's saying, we can't change the world around us until we make changes to ourselves. We can't make changes, or we can't change the world around us until we make changes to ourselves. It goes back to the saying, lead by example. People's friends tend to reflect who they are, which is why the following saying or sayings were created. Number one. Show me who your friends are, and I'll show you who you are. Wow. Number two. I don't know why I'm holding my shoulder up. Number two. Birds of a feather flock together. Number three. One rotten apple spoils the whole bunch. I know you heard those, I know I have. I've, I've been hearing those since I was a child. My goodness alive. But they are true. It's not just hearing them, but they are true. The way we think, the way we behave, the energy we put out, and the way we respond are all choices made by us on a daily basis. On a daily basis. By taking a more conscious approach to several areas of our lives, those changes will carry over into other areas outside of personal and manifest into positive results in our family and community. Here's a quote by Maya Angelou. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, Change your attitude, Maya Angelou. Number one in the personal, the author starts out with our commitment to a higher being. In my case, it's Jesus. It's God, God Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Number one, when you read in the book, it will say, all praises to the Most High. Now most people feel, a lot of people, not most, feel comfortable in saying most high because they are not sure somebody is saying Jesus, somebody is saying uh, Jehovah, somebody is saying I don't have an issue with that. My God, his name is Jehovah. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah I can't even remember all the names he has. But we call him Jesus because of the birth of Christ. And in the book where it was stated, you read in the genealogy of Mary, in genealogy of Matthew, of Matthew, book of Matthew, New Testament, I can reach over and get it really, gives you the genealogy. His name is Jesus. We call him Jesus. Jesus the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. You'll see all of that referred to in the Bible. Jesus the Christ. The Christ is not his last name. Christ means anointed. Christ means he's the Messiah. Messiah means savior. So we don't get caught up on all of that. That's not what we're about, whether, you know, what you're dealing with. Just make sure that you know who your God is. And I pray that he is the God of all gods. 
I pray that he's the creator of the universe. I pray that he's the creator of heaven and earth. So the point of it is, number one, he's saying, know where you stand in your personal beliefs, okay? Now, let's go to cultural importance. So he says, when our ancestors were brought to America, they had their faith stripped, that's true, and were then taught the Eurocentric interpretation of the Bible, that's true. They didn't want us praying to the Most High, so they replaced them with their own likeness, so we look um, to their saviors. Eh, that's true, okay? So we know, if we wanna get really caught up in this, we know that the picture we see of Jesus is not Jesus. History tells us that. Just research it out. He didn't look like that. That's, they needed to draw some type of photo of somebody that looked serene, and on and on and on. That's neither here nor there. Just know that Jesus is God. He's sitting next to the Father, the right hand of the Father, and just know this, God is a spirit. So don't let your faith be hindered by something other cultures and other people do. Okay? Don't do that. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. We read in Revelations that give a slight description of what Jesus looks like. And hair like lamb's wool, feet like polished brass, eyes like flames of fire. Okay? We know the region that he was born in. Okay? In the African region. We know that already. So let's not be stuck there. Let's just make sure we have a personal relationship with God the Father with the Holy Spirit. We accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and we allow the Holy Spirit to come and rule and reign in our hearts. And we'll find all the answers when we stand before the Father. We will, and we will in Judgment Day. So we'll know that. So now let's move on. So it says here, uh, the Most High, uh, so they replaced him with, okay, so I say to you, this is a quote, so I say to you, seek God and discover him and make him a power in your life. Without him, all of our efforts turn to ashes and our sun rises into the darkest nights. Without him, life is a meaningless drama with the decisive scenes missing. But with him, we are able to rise from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. With him, we are able to rise from the middle night of desperation to the daybreak of joy. St. Augustine was right. We were made for God and we will be restless until we find rest in him. Do you know that was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? That quote is from him. So, number two. So the first one was, get your clear, conscious clear, and know who it is that you worship, who it is that you serve, okay? Number two, in the personal category, know your identity. Know your identity. So he says, almost all of our history has been hidden lied about or whitewashed into non-existence. But there are enough remaining fragments to piece together what actually happened. There are maps, journal entries, newspaper clippings, and historical uh, descriptions that the internet has become a repository of information. If we look at the evidence subjectively, there are only a few possible conclusions that can be drawn from, that can be drawn from it. A great place to start, researching is with the 1747 map of Africa created by Emmanuel Bowen as part of his last collection now, after that, there is a 1766 French map 
created by Duke Orleans, O-R-L-E-A-N-S, that contains notes about our identity. I gotta stop here for a minute. Now see, this is why reading is so important. And this is why looking at this, see now, in the 48 Laws of Black Empowerment, that's our book, did you know, did you know that there was, I'm gonna go back up here to what he just recommended to us. And this is a book review. This is not, um, we're taking our time, we're learning, and I pray you're learning with me. And, and, and leave a comment if you're getting something out of this. Okay, so let's go back up to where he says, a great place to start, researching. Research is huge. Says this with the 1747 map of Africa. 1747 map of Africa. Created by Emmanuel Boeing. Did you know about that map? And he says, uh, that was part of his collection. And then he goes further, he says, after that, there is the 1766 French map created for the Duke of Orleans that contained notes about our identity. Do you know that there is information about us in, in the library that you would never... I found that out in teaching black history for 20 years. I had to find it on my own, just freelance researching, going to the library. Folks saying, how do you know this stuff? Saying it's in the library. It's all written in there about us. If we would take time and go look it up, or now we can just use the computer. Let's move on. It says, we've bought, I'm sorry, we've been so caught up with chasing our true identity that we often overlook what's right in front of our face. Wow, I'm amazed. He says, knowing who we are and where we come from will put a lot of our current economic and political problems into perspective. I don't need to go any farther than this on this video. I need to go back and say that again. Knowing who we are and where we come from will put a lot of our current economic and political problems into perspective. Guys, I'm going to really, really recommend, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box on where you can get this book from. It's not very expensive. Get it on the Kindle like I have it. It's on my Kindle here. Guys, you need to get this. Read it with me, okay? And then leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts and questions as we go through and learn and search this out. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. And what did Maya Angelou, Angelou say? Right back here. Let's go back to Maya Angelou. She said, she said, right here. I'm reading what, what she said. It's right there. Okay? It's in the book. It says, quote, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. So we got to work on changing some things, and then we got to work on changing our attitude in some things. This is huge. I'm determined. I'm determined to work with this. It bothers me with our people. I know that who we are. I'm learning who we are. I know. I know who we are in Christ. I'm learning who He made us to be. We are mighty powerful people. We have endured things that many other races, cultures have not endured. We've been pressed down. We've been pressed on every side. But somehow we seem to come forth. We seem to press our way. We seem to still make our way through. Don't let anybody talk down on you. Don't let anybody make you feel bad about your heritage, about your melanin in your skin, about who you are. No. Find out who you are. Read, research. God, do you know that I got to go? This will be another lesson, but do you know that when you study the continent, 
of Africa. We've been lied to so much about that continent. Do you know that there's every wealth that you can find there? And do you know if you do research, you'll find out why the people of Africa are not rich, not all of them, why they have poverty? It's documented. It's documented. <laughs> it's no secret. We just don't know it because we didn't look it up and we didn't read it, but they literally wrote it out. It's on film, it's on video, it's documented. I pray that you check this out with me, that you review this book. This is a start, okay? 48 Laws of Black Empowerment. This is your girl, Queen C, the encourager. I am no longer bound by limited knowledge, by doubt, fear, unbelief. No, whom the sun set free, you're free indeed. Let's go for it. Let's go upward and forward only. This is the encourager. We'll see you right here next time.